and welcome back to Living Creative with Pixie Princess. Today, I wanna to show you how to make a loom knitted dish scrubby. These are wonderful. They clean your dishes very well. And if you do craft fairs, this was my number one seller when I was doing craft fairs. They're easy to work up on a 24 peg loom and they're fun to make. And you can whip up a bunch of them in a short amount of time. So if you'd like to learn how to loom knit a dish scrubby, Stay tuned. So glad you came back to see how to make this dish scrubby. It's a fun and quick project and I think you will enjoy it. The tools that you will need is of course your loom and you need a 24 peg loom like this one. You'll need your loom pick. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need a darning needle to stitch it all together at the end. And I suggest you have a way to keep uh, track of your rows. I have a tally counter, but you can use paper and pen, whatever you want to use. And the yarn you'll need, you'll need a cotton yarn of your favorite color or whatever you choose but it does need to be cotton because you're gonna be washing dishes with this. I do not recommend an acrylic use 100% cotton. And today I'm using peaches and cream in the color bright orange. And you'll need some type of a scrubby yarn. And I'm using Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle in the color marshmallow. So let's get started. Pull out some yarn out of each skein of yarn you have, and you're gonna be using two strands as one. So get to the end of both strands here, put them together, and you're gonna pretend they are one strand, okay? So you're gonna start with a slip knot. This is how I make mine. I put a little tail behind my two fingers, across this over, and I make a little X. I put this part between my fingers, and then I pull it through the loop, and I have a slip knot, and that's with the two strands. You're gonna put this on the anchor peg, which is this peg that sticks out from your loom, and then tighten it. To start, once you get it going, it's really quick and easy. This is the hardest part. You're going to do a drawstring cast stone. And to do that, you're going to take your yarn behind your first peg and then in front, behind, in front. So basically, you're just zigzagging. So do that all the way around till you get back to the anchor peg, make sure you're grabbing both strands of yarn. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is loosely Put this over just a few pegs. And every peg that has a loop on it, you're gonna knit it over the top of the strand. But make sure you grab both strands of yarn. Knit that over. Knit that over and hold it loosely. I would suggest you know, pulling out a good amount of yarn from your um, skeins. If you hold that strand of yarn too tight, it's going to give you some trouble. So you're skipping a peg because there's not one to knit off down there or knit over, or whatever you want to call it. 
After this part, it's easy peasy. Okay, so you've knitted everything. We got one more. And you have to be careful when you're using two. It's kind of hard to, easy to miss it now. So now, every peg has a loop on it. And here comes the easy part. We're just going to e-wrap the whole thing. So just wrap both strands, not too tight, all the way around. Looks like I missed one there. But it will work out in the end. Don't overthink it. But try to make sure you do get every peg if you can. Just pulling out some more yarn. Okay, so we've wrapped all the way around. And so I'm just going to go back. I'm going to knit that last one off to secure it all. So now I'm just going to go around and knit every peg. So I'm just taking the bottom loops, pull them over the top loops, over the peg, like so. And that's the one I missed, so I'm not going to be able to knit it. I didn't catch that, but just don't overthink it. It'll be fine. All the way around. So, that's right, okay. And sometimes the scrubby yarn can be a little hard to work with, but you will love these things when you wash your dishes. And that can be thrown in your washing machine or the dishwasher for those dishes that go in there you can throw this in with them okay so we've knitted everything around so that was our first row so I'm going to tally one row and we want a total of 16 rows so that was row number one so I'm going to do one more row with you, and then I'm going to leave you to it. And you should do this very quickly. And so just go around the loom one more time using both strands. This is called the E-wrap, and it's called that because it kind of resembles a cursive E. And this orange and marshmallow color kind of makes me think of a dreamsicle. <laughs> so I think these are perfect colors for a kitchen. But you can get yarn that kind of coincides to the kitchen that you're making it for. You can make these for yourself. Uh, they are great for part of a housewarming gift. Okay, I've wrapped all the way around. They're great sellers at the craft fairs. I sold a bunch of these at the craft fairs. All right, so now we're just going to knit all the way around till we get back to the anchor peg. Remember to grab both strands and pull it over both strands. And having two distinctly different colors kind of helps here. But I think the orange and white is going to be really pretty together. Makes it more fun to wash your dishes, too. <laughs> okay, I'm hoping I'm staying in frame here for you to see this. 
All right, almost there. See how quickly this goes on these small looms here? 24 pegs, it works really quickly. All right, gone full, full circle. At this time, I'm gonna tally my row. So I've done two. And I'm gonna take the slip knot off of my anchor peg and then I'm just going to get it out of the way here. Can't see what I'm doing here. Well, okay. Here we go. There we go. Just get it out of the way and make sure you don't work this when you're working. So now we've done two. We want a total of 16. So I'm going to let you pause the video and work your total of 16 rows and then meet me back after you've completed 16 rows and I will show you how to complete this. Okay, so I have completed my 16 rows and I believe you have too. That's why you've come back to join me. So let's get this baby off of this loom and put it to use. So, you know, we did the drawstring at the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and close that one up. So all you're doing is just like a drawstring, pulling it through. And then I'm gonna cut some of it off so I don't have so much. And I'm just gonna poke it through right here where the hole is. Okay, and then we can finish cinching that up when we get to the other side. So for this side, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this working yarn we've been working with, we're gonna wrap it around the loom about one and a half times, like so. Then you're gonna pick up your scissors and snip it off. Okay, you do not have any yarn attached to a skein or a ball. You just have this working yarn. There are two options you can use, and I'm gonna show you both, and you can use the one that you prefer. If you don't wanna use your needle right away, you can use your pick tool, and what you'll do is go from the top, and then you're gonna scoop up the working yarn, but you're gonna pull it all the way through. Let me show you that again. Go from the top, scoop up the working yarn like you were gonna knit it, but don't pull it all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. Here is option two. You can take your yarn, thread it to a darning needle that has a large eye. I like metal. A lot of the uh, looms come with um, plastic ones. Those are perfectly fine. Use what you are comfortable with. Make sure you're getting both strands threaded though. Okay, you're just gonna pull it through enough. And that's the issue here, is getting it tangled up just enough so it doesn't get um, pulled out, okay? So, instead of going from the top, you're gonna take your needle, go through the bottom, and pull it all the way through. And make sure you get it all. The bottom, all the way through, and pull that. And then you can take them off after you do a couple all right, so you take the needle underneath, pull it all the way through, and keep going all the way around and taking them off every couple of pull-throughs as you go. So whichever method feels most comfortable with you, you can use your um, darning needle or you can continue using your pick tool. You will need to thread a darning needle later, so you know this is already done at the end. So you don't have to do it at the end, but whatever way you are comfortable, make this fun. 
for and enjoyable for you to do. Okay. All right. And these small looms projects on them take they work up so quickly. Um, you can refer back. I have a couple of videos making um, plastic bag holders. I have one that's just a regular uh, e-knit wrap knit stitch and then I have one where I made it a little bit fancier and um, made a basket weave. I like that one. I think that one's really pretty. Those are very useful too because you get all these garbage, um, not garbage bags, grocery bags and you don't know what to do with them and I know when we get them we use them for um, garbage uh, bags in the bathroom or we reuse them at the grocery store. Uh, the grocery store we use, we usually take our own bags um, so we don't collect a lot of plastic bags anymore but I do get a few from certain stores and I like to reuse them rather than just throwing them away. And that's a good way to keep them tidy. So you can refer back to both of those videos, see which one you like best and make one for yourself. I love them. We're almost there. And these are wonderful. They really do get your dishes, help you uh, get your dishes cleaned. Two more. This one, take that one off. And this one, which is the last one, pull it all the way through, you don't get it caught on that, and take it off of the loom. Now it's free. We can put this away. So now, you've still got your um, needle threaded. So just like we cinched this up, we're going to cinch this up too. So just cinch it tight and just kind of fluff it out a little bit and make a little circle. Okay, so now we're just going to sew the two sides together. This is a nice thick little uh, scrubby sponge and I love it. It does wonderful. So I'm going to cinch that up tight and then I'm just going to go through and go to the other side and pull it and just go around make sure you're grabbing both sides These are so fun to make, and I don't normally use the sparkle. I, that was the only thing I could find, and I like it. It's very sparkly and pretty, and it'll make it more fun to wash your dishes. <laughs> so just go all the way around here, and I'm going to go back, and then I'm just going to kind of weave it in right here. just to secure it. And go back. Then I'm just gonna make just a little knot here. I'm gonna go through here, pull it through. Leave that open so you can pull it through here and give it a good knot. give it a snip and you're done that was so fast and easy and these really do a great job scrubbing your dishes the hard to get off stuff I think you're gonna love it I think you're gonna enjoy making these if you do please send me pictures I'd love to see it please um, like this video if you found value in it and if you haven't subscribed please do so. We would love to have you on board and we do 
loom knitting, crochet, cooking, photography, and maybe some other stuff sprinkled in there. So until the next video, God bless.